Checkpoint Charlie was an important crossing point in the Berlin Wall, which separated East and West Berlin from 1961 to 1989. Today, both the Berlin Wall and Checkpoint Charlie remain some of the most prominent symbols of the Cold War. By the early 1950s, the Soviet restricted the immigration from the rest of the Eastern Bloc, including East Germany. However, in occupied Germany, the lines between East Germany and the Western occupied zones remained easily crossed in most places. Subsequently, the inner German border between the two German states was closed and a barbed wire fence erected. Even after closing of the inner Germany city sector border between East and West Berlin, it remained considerably more accessible than the rest of the border because it was administered by all four occupying powers. Accordingly, Berlin became the main route by which East Germans left for the West. It became the loophole through which Eastern Bloc citizens could escape. The 3.5 million East Germans who had left by 1961 totaled approximately 20% of the entire East German population. The immigrants tend to be young and well-educated. The loss was disproportionately great among professionals, engineers, technicians, physicians, teachers, lawyers, and skilled workers. Their exodus became so damaging to the political credibility and economic viability of East Germany. So finally, in 1961, the police and army engineers began to construct a more permanent concrete wall, separating East and West Berlin. Ten days after closing the border, from August 23, 1961, the East German authorities allowed tourists from abroad, diplomats, and military personnel of the Western powers to enter East Berlin. Only to the crossing point of berlin Friedrichstrasse or the underground station. They were not allowed to use any of the remaining crossing points. The Western military forces accepted the East German directives and soon the U.S. Army opened a third checkpoint at Friedrichstrasse in the west. The non-permanent wooden building was erected in the middle of the street. Before August 1961, there had been no U.S. Army presence there. Checkpoint Charlie was designated as the single crossing point on foot or by car for foreigners and members of the Allied forces. The main function of the checkpoint was to register and inform members of the Western military forces before entering East Berlin. Foreign tourists were also informed but not checked in the West. Generally, Germans were not allowed to pass the checkpoint in Friedrichstrasse, even though it had never had an official name. The name Charlie came from the letter C in the native phonetic alphabet. Similarly for the other island checkpoints on the Autobahn such as the Checkpoint Alpha and Checkpoint Bravo. The Soviets simply called it Frederiksrasse Crossing Point. Checkpoint Charlie was maintained by the US Army and Checkpoint Frederiksrasse by the East Germans border guards and the Soviet Army. Checkpoint Charlie was made up of a watchtower and barriers erected by the Soviet forces, while the American forces originally had only a temporary wooden shack, followed by a temporary metal structure. The checkpoint was curiously asymmetrical. During its 28-year active life, the infrastructure on the eastern side was expanded to include not only the wall, watchtower, and zigzag barriers, but a multi-lane shed where cars and their occupants were checked. However, the Allied Authority never erected any permanent buildings and made to do with the well-known wooden shed, which was replaced during the 1980s by a large metal structure, now displayed at the Allied Museum in Western Berlin. Their reason was that they did not consider the inner Berlin sector boundary as an international border and did not treat it as such. As the most visible Berlin Wall checkpoint, Checkpoint Charlie was featured in movies and books. Café Adler, the famous café and viewing place for Allied officials, armed forces, and visitors alike. It is situated right on the checkpoint. It was an excellent viewing point to look into East Berlin while having something to eat and drink. 
with the building of the wall and the checkpoint comes more trouble. Soon after the construction of the Berlin Wall, a standoff occurred between the U.S. and Soviet tanks on either side of Checkpoint Charlie. It began on October 22 as a dispute over whether East German border guards were authorized to examine the travel documents of a U.S. diplomat based in West Berlin. Since according to the agreement between all four Allied powers occupying Germany, there was to be free movement for Allied forces in Berlin and that no German military forces from either West or East Germany were to be based in the city. Moreover, the U.S. did not initially recognize the East German state and its right to remain its self-declared capital of East Berlin. Instead, the Americans only recognized the authority of the Soviets over East Berlin rather than their East German allies. By October 27, 10 Soviet and an equal number of American tanks stood 100 yards apart on either side of the checkpoint. Their standoff ended peacefully on the 28th, following a U.S.-Soviet understanding to withdraw tanks and reduce tensions. There were also several escapes along the wall in the checkpoint. After the Berlin Wall was erected in 1961, there were many means of escape that had not been anticipated. For example, Checkpoint Charlie was initially blocked only by a gate, and a citizen of DDR smashed a car through it to escape. So strong, a pole was erected. Another SKP approached the barrier in a convertible. The windscreen removed prior to the event and slipped under the barrier. This was repeated two weeks later, so the East Germans duly lowered the barrier and added uprights. Some of the escapes ended more tragically, such as Buchard Nering, who was a member of the East German riot police. On January 1974, about 7.30 p.m., the 23-year-old entered Friedrich Strasse border post. He is wearing his uniform and armed with a submachine gun. He took one of the passport control guards hostage. Using him as a human shield, he manages to clear the first barrier. But when he bends down to dock under the second barrier, he briefly loses control over his hostage. Several shots were fired at him from the guard houses. About 9 p.m., Nearing dies of his bullet wounds in the hospital. Herbert Halley, on the evening of April 3rd, 1975, a 25-year-old Herbert entered the border strip from East Berlin at the corner of Wilhelmstrasse and Simmerstrasse. Just before he reached the final border wall on his way to West Berlin, he triggered the alarm. One of the border guards fired a warning shot and Herbert turned around. Just as he had decided to climb back into East Berlin, a well-aimed shot hit him in the back. Badly wounded, Herbert was taken to a hospital where he died the same night. As the Helsinki Declaration was about to be signed, they hashed up the circumstances surrounding his death. It was not until 1995, after the East German state had ceased to exist, that the truth came out. Lastly, there was Peter Factor. On August 17, 1962, a teenage East German Peter Factor was shot in the pelvis by East German guards while trying to escape from East Berlin. His body lay tangled in a barbed wire fence as he bled to death in full view of the world's media. American soldiers could not rescue him because he was a few meters inside the Soviet sector. East German border guards were reluctant to approach him for the fear of provoking Western soldiers, one of whom had shot an East German border guard just days earlier. More than an hour later, Peter's body was removed by the East German guards. A spontaneous demonstration formed in the American side of the checkpoint, protesting against the action of the East and the inaction of the West. A few days later, a crowd threw stones at the Soviet buses driving towards the Soviet war memorial. The Soviets tried to escort the buses with armored personnel carriers. Thereafter, the Soviets were only allowed to cross via the San Krug Bridge. After the German reunification in 1990, a memorial was constructed on Simmerstrasse. 
at the precise spot where he had died on the eastern side, and this has been a focal point for some of the commemorations regarding the wall. The wall and the checkpoint will finally meet their end on the night of November 9, 1989, when about 3,000 West Berliners came to the checkpoint Charlie and several hundred of East Berliners to checkpoint Friedrichstrasse. While the people in the West cried, let us in, the people in the East cried, let us out. At 11 p.m., the checkpoint Friedrichstrasse was closed by the East German border commander. However, before midnight, the border was open completely and East Germans were allowed to enter the West. After more than 28 years, the wall was opened for people from the East. During the following months after opening the Berlin Wall, the checkpoint remained an official crossing point until the end of June 1990. On the 22nd of June, the guardhouse at Checkpoint Charlie was removed with great ceremony, followed by the original border sign, You are leaving the U.S. sector, was dismantled after the November 1990, the East German checkpoint Friedrichstrasse was raised. A copy of the guardhouse was erected on the original place on August 13, 2000. It resembles the first guardhouse erected during 1961, behind the sandbag barrier towards the border. Over the years, this had been replaced several times by guardhouses of different sizes and layouts. Checkpoint Charlie has since become one of Berlin's primary tourist attractions, where some original remnants of the border crossing blend with reconstructed parts, memorial, and tourist facilities. An open-air exhibit was opened during the summer of 06. Gallery walls along Friedrichstrasse and Simmerstrasse give information about escape attempts, how the checkpoint was expanded, and its significance during the Cold War. Also an overview of other important memorial sites and museums about the division of Germany and the wall is presented. Until the end of 1999, several empty properties on the area on the former checkpoint Friedrichstrasse were sold to international investors and built on with office buildings. Developers demolished the East German checkpoint watchtower in 2000 to make way for offices and shops. The watchtower was the last surviving major original checkpoint Charlie structure. The city tried to save the tower but failed as it was not classified as a historic landmark. To this day, the area between the East German side of the border crossing remains vacant, providing space for a number of temporary tourist and memorial uses. The Checkpoint Charlie now provides visitors a reminder of what happened at the site where they stand and how different the landscape of the city must have once looked. Nearby is a small private museum about the checkpoint called Hausem Checkpoint Charlie. It was opened in 1963. Also in one of the vacant lots is the Black Box Cold War Exhibition. It has illuminated the division of Germany and Berlin since 2012. The free open-air exhibit offers original Berlin Wall segments and information about the historic site. The indoor exhibit illustrates Berlin's contemporary history with 16 media stations, a movie theater, and original objects and documents. Mainstream media, Checkpoint Charlie was prominent in political novels and films, such as the following James Bond, The Spy Who Came in the Cold,
rich spice and the man from uncle checkpoint charlie is indeed a symbol of the cold war for nearly 900,000 tourists from all over the world visit the checkpoint every year That's it for the history of Checkpoint Charlie. Until next time, bye. So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the